All right, so uh, I just noticed that there's no host name set, so I think I'm going to do that before I configure any VLANs. So to do that, just go to configure and system properties, system identity, and we're just going to set a name here. Uh, I'm going to call mine Franz uh, EX2200, and then just hit OK. And every time you do a change, you need to commit it, same as the command line. So I'm just going to say OK, and then make sure you click Commit up here. And just for good measure, I'm going to get out of the SSH terminal I had up. Oh, it already changed. See the change there? I thought I might have had to reconnect, but it looks like it already picked the change up. Cool. Um, so yeah, now let's uh, see how we can create a VLAN. So if we go to interfaces, or actually, let's go to ports first. So right now, there's nothing plugged into the front ports of my switch. Uh, all I have plugged in is the management cable going to the router. And you can see here, there's nothing configured, and we have a default VLAN for every single port. So what I'm gonna do right now is plug two things in. And the, on port zero, I'm gonna plug in a connection to the router. So that's effectively gonna be our, our, route, our, our switch's source of the internet. That's the, the, the WAN, I guess you would call it, wide area network. Um, so zero is gonna be going right to the router. That's where it's gonna be getting the internet. And then port one, I'm gonna um, plug that in directly to my Proxmox server. So I'm gonna go do that right now and we'll take a look at uh, what happens after. All right, so I just plugged them in and let me refresh this. And since we have default configured, by default, this is gonna basically act like an unmanaged switch. So you would be able to, to just use this as an unmanaged switch. Um, but we want to set up at least one VLAN for now. Um, so you can see those ports are now green. Let's go back to configure, go to switching, and then VLAN. So most of the configuration for VLANs actually happens with your router. Um, it's pretty, the, this VLAN setup on the actual switch is pretty simple. So we just need to click add and give this a uh, name. So Let's give this a name of uh, VLAN 5 and the VLAN ID, let's make that 5. And this is important because we're going to need to reference this number uh, in the router configuration. So let's just click OK. And commit the change. Okay, success. Now we actually need to add certain ports to VLAN 5. So if we go back to the interfaces ports tab, we're gonna add both port zero and one to the VLAN 5. And in addition, we're going to configure trunk on these. So I'll show you what I mean in a sec. So let's change the VLAN options here. We're gonna make this trunk, which basically means you can use um, access multiple VLANs. So like trunks gonna in, uh, we're gonna be able to access the default VLAN and also whatever else we add here. So we're gonna add VLAN 5 and we'll make the native default. If we didn't do that, if we just did access, um, VLAN 5 wouldn't be able to access the internet. So let me just commit that. And again, I'm not an expert in networking, so I might need to ask somebody else about the intricacies of what trunk means, but basically it gives you access to more than one VLAN, is my understanding. 
All right, and then the same thing for this one, which this represents our Proxmox server. So that's definitely going to need to be on VLAN 5 and also part of this default VLAN. So this is going to be trunk VLAN 5. Okay. All right. Let me just wait for this to load. Okay, cool. Um, pretty sure that's all, that's all the configuration we're going to need to do for now um, on the actual switch. So let's um, head over to the router and see how we can make the router and this switch communicate with the VLANs. All right, so now we're uh, looking at the router page and we need to make uh, a couple configuration changes here and firewall changes in order to get the VLAN to work. So first, let's go to the network tab. And if we go to uh, interfaces, uh, we need to go to devices and then add a device configuration. And device type is going to be a VLAN. Uh, this is going to be ETH0, VLAN ID. Important, this needs to be the same ID that you used uh, on your switch. And I think the rest of this is default. I can't take credit for uh, being able to teach all this. Um, I watched a YouTube video that kind of walked me through this, and I will definitely share it. It was uh, really helpful. So uh, let's just save and apply that. All right. And if we go back to the interfaces, we need to create a new interface and call it uh, VLAN5 and static address. And this is going to be the software VLAN that, that we just made. And create the interface. All right. And give it an IP. Now, I'm going to use dot .5 because my VLAN ID is 5. And I want all the devices to be um, on that particular 5 subnet. All right. And pick this one. And then that looks good. Um, that's good. And let's go to DHCP server. And we just need to basically turn this on, which uh, just by clicking on it, we did. And we leave all this default. So we'll save that. Save and apply. All right, so now we have this VLAN. So now we actually need to attach it to this switch. So if we go to the switch uh, tab here, we need to add that VLAN or add a VLAN. Make sure you give it the right ID and call it VLAN 5. And now we need to turn this to tagged. And then we also need to um, turn one more to tagged. And we also need the WAN to be tagged. Okay, this is the part where it's a little uh, fuzzy to me. So I'm just gonna go with this configuration and we'll see. So I know this LAN three is basically uh, going from the router to the switch. Um, so that's what we want to tag. So let me save and apply that. Yeah, when I initially set this up, the troubles I had were on that page and then with the firewall. So um, at this point, let's head over to the firewall settings. So if we go to firewall, so this is what we have by default. We actually have to add a new firewall zone and let's just call this uh, VLAN five and input. We're going to reject input because um, I only want VLAN five to be able to um, reach out to the internet. I don't want it to be able to reach internally to our router, for example. I'm gonna leave that like this and covered networks. 
uh, forward to destination zones. This is going to be WAN and LAN, I believe. So let's try that. All right, and then one other thing um, that I learned from watching a bunch of YouTube videos um, that I needed to do was add a, add a traffic rule here. And this is gonna allow uh, DNS and DHCP on that VLAN. So if we go to add, and let's just call it DH or VLAN 5 DHCP and DNS. Uh, this is going to be for the VLAN and destination zone is input. Destination port, five, three, six, seven, and six, eight. And save that, and then save and apply. Okay, now let's see if this works. Uh, there might be some minor tweaks we need to make, but let's, let's go ahead and test this now. So let's go to Proxmox and pull up a VM and let's enable this network adapter and let's see what it gets assigned. All right, so it already got something assigned. So let's do IP config. And there you go. We see we have 192.168.5.169. Um, I forgot to mention on the network tab here, you need to update this with the VLAN tag of five. So if we go back here, I want to make sure we can also browse the internet here. because I had some trouble with that, setting that up as well. So let's just try that. So if we can't access the internet, that, then we have some, uh, some firewall setting problems. So yeah, clearly something here with the firewall settings uh, is still not right. So let's go try to figure that out. All right, I'm thinking it has to do with this one. Covered networks. This is a little confusing. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, that seems like it's working. Let's try one other test. Okay, cool, so we have internet access. Let's just make sure our IP is still good. Okay, and now let's just for kicks, let's change the network device here and get rid of the VLAN. Go to the console. Uh, let's disable the adapter. Okay, there we go. Now it's on 192.168.0.169. So on this network, I should be able to access like my NAS, for example. So let's try that. 168.0.170. This is my true NAS. Um, okay, so that is accessible. Now let's go back. Let's change it again to the five subnet and make sure that I can't access this because I don't want that um, VLAN 5 to be able to access this. And if it can, then we need to make a, another change. So let's again go back here. VLAN 5. Okay. Let's do our check here. Okay, 
Now let's go back. So it is five. Now let's make sure true NAS is not accessible. And it still is. So that's a problem. I don't want that to be. And I think I know what the fix is. I think I saw it a couple seconds ago. So I think right here, allowed forward to destination zones. We don't want to allow it to the LAN because the LAN is our internal network, the 192.168.0. Uh, so we just want it to go to the WAN which is the wide area network, AKA the internet. So let me try saving that and then save and apply. All right, now let's check this again. I'm not sure if you need to re-enable network adapter or not. That's still actually is that might be cached. Let me try this. Let's try this in guests and guests. Okay, so see that is not no longer accessible. Okay, so awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted VLAN five to just access the internet and nothing internal. Um, and yeah, that's how we did it. So I know that was a bit confusing and convoluted, but uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, really a lot of the hardcore configuration is gonna happen on your router. Uh, there really wasn't much to setting up the switch uh, other than resetting um, you know, the root password and getting reset the factory defaults. But um, as far as configuration, you just basically make a, a VLAN here, give it an ID and uh, assign the VLAN to certain ports and then everything else takes place on your uh, router. And like I said, I can't take credit for um, knowing everything here. I, I found a bunch of YouTube videos and I'm gonna link them all uh, in, the, in the description because they were all helpful and they, uh, I'm sure they'll be a, of use to you. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, the next thing I wanna do for the uh, Home Lab Challenge is I'm looking into getting a, a new router. So I don't want a, um, like a consumer grade router that's shared with a, uh, an act, a wireless access point and also a switch. I want to get you know a dedicated uh, piece of hardware like a server um, and run PFSense on it and then get a, uh, a dedicated wireless access point. Um, so yeah, we'll see, see where that leads me. But um, yeah, hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment and uh, I'll try to uh, help you out. Thanks.